After the base plate has been added, I'll model the central web underneath the cylindrical area of the revolved feature. This starts flush with the free end of the base plate. The easiest way to accomplish this is with the rib feature. For the types of parts encountered on the CSWA and CSWP exams, rib features can be very useful for creating this type of geometry quickly and easily. To create the web between the base plate and the revolve feature, I start a sketch on the end face of the base plate and sketch a line that spans the gap between the features. Making use of the automatic midpoint relation makes this an easy sketch to fully define. The rest of the rib definition is defined in the rib property manager. The rib feature has two ways of working called normal to sketch and parallel to sketch. In normal to sketch, you sketch a plane normal to the direction of the rib, such that you are sketching the top view of the rib. Now this gives you the ability to create a rib that might be in the shape of a T, a grid, or some other shape. In the parallel to sketch method, you sketch on a plane that is through the center of the rib. Using this method, the rib can only exist in a single plane. In this case, because I'm sketching on the face of the plate, the normal to sketch option applies. Finally, I make the rib 0.375 inches thick using the midplane option. Take note of the gray arrow. It indicates in which direction the material will be added. If the rib's not surrounded by solid geometry or if it extends out into the space, it will fail. Make sure the arrow is pointing toward solid material. The end brace is next to complete the rib structure. There are several ways to do this, and you might be tempted to use a rib feature for this geometry, but a rib will not work here. In fact, you might have been tempted to create the central web and the end brace all in one rib feature. Unfortunately, the surrounding geometry does not lend itself to this approach, so two features will have to be used. For the end brace, I've chosen to use a simple extrude. I start the sketch on the same face used for the previous rib feature. The vertical lines are tangent to the cylindrical face. I can make this relation by selecting the circular edge at the end of the revolve feature. Even though the edge is out of plane, SOLIDWORKS projects the edge into the sketch plane to make the tangent sketch relation. To create the arc, I select the circular edge at the end of the revolve feature and use Convert Entities. Convert Entities projects items that are not in the sketch plane into the sketch plane. I will use Trim to keep only the portion of the circle that I need for this feature. To finish the feature, I extrude it into the existing solid a distance of 0.375 inches. One more detail remains to complete the rib structure. The simple hole that goes through the central web. This hole can be sketched on the face of the rib, but it's better practice to sketch it on the right plane of the part. This is because when you sketch on a plane, you're less tied to existing geometry, which can change in the future, especially in the context of the CSWP exam where making design changes is a requirement. For example, you might be asked to make a change to the part that eliminates or changes the face you might sketch on. For example, imagine if the central web had to undergo a change that created a draft angle. The face of the web would then be angled and the hole would change orientation, it would no longer go straight through horizontally. Of course, during the exam, creating geometry quickly can be more important than following best practice recommendations, but do keep this idea in mind. I'll use the right plane to sketch a circle with a diameter of one inch. I'll add two dimensions to position it. and I'll extrude a cut through all in both directions.